This is the second lab in the series for CIS 132 Routing Protocols and Concepts. In the first video, we reviewed LANs and default gateways. If you haven't configured the other LANs in the topology, do that now. So, in the first video, we did Granite City Campus LAN 1. So, if you haven't done Granite City LAN 2, Belleville LAN, or the Redbud LAN, do that now and make sure you can ping from all the workstations to your default gateway. Don't try to ping past your default gateway, just ping to your default gateway. If you remember, the default gateway's purpose was to be a mailman and deliver any traffic that you might have for a network that was not on your LAN to a remote site. So the purpose is so that we can get connected to computers that would be outside our local network. Now in order to cross this distance, these wide area networks, we have to configure a serial interface on our router as opposed to a, an Ethernet or fast Ethernet interface for LANs. So LANs use serial interfaces. So as you can see in this topology, I got a, a red serial connection between Granite City and Belleville. Now in the real world, this would be done by a regional Bell office, so uh, that's a fancy way of saying that's going to be your telco. So AT&T probably supplies SWIC with their wide area network connections. Back in the day when we configured LANs and we implemented LANs, we had to worry about bandwidth. And when we bought a NIC card, we had to make sure we had the right NIC card because the switch that we might have might have a different bandwidth speed. Well, in today's world, we don't have to worry about that because everything is framed with Ethernet and the NIC cards are auto-sensing. So we don't worry about that. Well, with WANs, we have a little bit to worry about because the encapsulation that goes across WANs on Cisco routers is HDLC. So as long as we don't change that, we don't have to worry about the encapsulation type. But the one thing we do have to worry about is the clock rate. Normally, in the real world, your telco will supply you with that clock rate. But in the lab, we don't have a telco. So what we have to do is we have to put a clock rate on one end of that serial cable and usually it's the DCE cable. Um, it's kind of hard to, to tell what part of the cable is a DCE side and which one is not. Um, there is a command called show controllers, but with Packet Tracer, if you just put your pointer on the cable, one side shows up with a clock, so that's your DCE clock. So the configuration is very, very similar to the uh, LAN configuration. The only, the only difference is, is the clock rate. So I get to my global config mode, and I go to a serial interface. And of course, you have to type it correctly. And we put in an IP address. And the mask here will be 255.255.255.255.252. And that's a 30-bit mask, and it's usually considered the serial mask. And the other command is clock rate, and we're going to set it at 64,000. And then I do the no shut. All right, notice it did not come up and it won't come up until I do the other side.
Now, this is a DT side, so I don't have to put a clock right there. But now, once I hit no shut, I should see that come up. If I type show IP interface brief, I should now see the two interfaces, the fast ethernet interface and the serial interface. So I'm going to try to ping back to the Granite City side to make sure that that link is up and I got all the right IP addresses. I believe that was 209 and that's successful. So I know that link is good. So let's ask ourselves what we have now. We have all our LANs working properly and now we have this connection between Granite City and Belleville. What I'd like to do now is test to see if I can ping from the Granite City Campus LAN 1 to the Granite City Campus LAN 2. Alright, and you notice that it is successful. I can do that. But watch what happens now when I try to ping from Granite City LAN 1 to the Belleville email server. It fails. And that's because we don't have any way to get there. We don't know how. So if I go to my router and I do a show IP route, you notice I only know about the three networks that I'm directly connected to. So take this time now and configure these, uh, configure this serial interface between Belleville and Redbud, and in the next video we will look at routing. So to summarize this video, the LAN configuration is very similar to the LAN configuration. The only big difference is that we have to put the clock rate on the DC side, and that we don't own this, we're leasing this line from a telco. So that ends this video. And we will uh, see you in video three.